Let's add custom items to Minecraft with Fabric in 1.21. 121 Minecraft modding courses available down below. With over 11 hours of content covering everything from the basics all the way to block entities and custom mobs. Alright, we found ourselves back in Teller once more. And in this tutorial, we'll be adding custom items to our project right here with Fabric, of course, in 1.21. And it is going to be absolutely fantastic it's gonna be awesome and you'll find that after you've set it up once it's actually not as complicated as one might think so for this we will need a custom class so that in the tutorial mode package we're going to right click new package first and that is going to be the item package in there all of our classes concerning items will go and we'll see the first one of which is the mod items class so in the item package once again right click new java class and we'll call this mod items note the name is uppercase for both the m as well as the i that is simply a java convention and there we go if we now hit enter to create this class we can see that it's going to get us a little dialog over here add file to git we'll simply hit the add key and then the name turns from red to green meaning that we have created a new class that previously wasn't added to our github commit or to the next commit basically to now it is added and we're going to be good to go so if at any time the class name is going to turn red or a file name turns red that is no issue whatsoever that has to do with your github repository and things with that if there is an error then you will always get a red underline right so a red name is not an error the red underline is an error that's very important and now to register items, there's a couple of steps that we need to take. The first step is we will need a method in order to call this class. So everything here gets initialized. That is going to be a public static void method. I'm going to call this the register mod items method. So I basically default to naming it register and then whatever the thing that we're registering. In this case, it is mod items. And in theory, we could leave this empty, but I don't like to keep it this empty. So I will basically use tutorial mod.logger.info. When a class is read and it has an underline, you can see I can click on this and press Alt and Enter to import this particular class. And then you can see the import over here appears automatically. Then inside of the info method, we're going to add a string that's going to be regist registering mod items for and then aims and then tutorial mod dot mod ID in this case. And there you go. Now, as always, for all of these different tutorials, all of the code is available down below. So if at any time you're unsure or you want to double check something or you just want to copy something over, that is totally fine. You can check the code down below in the description. It is linked there. So there you go. And this register mod items method will now be called in the tutorial mod class inside of the on initialize method. So this is going to be mod items dot register mod items. You can see that it suggests this to us. And when it suggests this to us, we can simply hit the tab key to autocomplete this. And you can see it has now been added to the on initialize method. Awesome. Proceeding back to the mod items class, we can then add a helper method. This is simply going to help us by registering the items for us in a little bit of an easier manner. This is going to be a private static, this time an item of from net minecraft item in this case so once again hit tab to auto complete this then we're going to call this method the register item method and this is going to have a string name parameter as well as an item called item as a parameter over here and then it's simply going to return a registry and this is extremely important you want to choose net minecraft registry and not Java RMI registry. So double check, right, if you hit registry and then hit the tab key that it imported the correct registry method. Very important. Then after registry, we're going to type in dot register. And inside of that register call, we want to do registries dot item all uppercase, as you can see, once again, hit tab to autocomplete. And then afterwards, a comma. Then here we need an identifier this is going to be the unique identifier for this particular item. You can see I start typing an I and it actually immediately suggests this to us. This is going to be the identifier dot of. Once again, hit tab to autocomplete this. So it's going to automatically import the particular class that you need. Then we need the namespace. Now the namespace is already defined. It is our mod ID. So here we simply want to put in tutorial mod dot mod underscore ID, comma, and then the name parameter right here. After the first closing parentheses, we then put another comma in and add the item 
and end this all with a semicolon after the last closing parentheses. And we have our register item helper method done. Awesome. And now with this, we can register our first item. It's going to be very exciting. This is going to be a public static final. And this is, of course, an item. This is going to be called pink underscore garnet. And this will be equal to the register item method that we've just created. Then we're going to give it a name string parameter. This is the pink underscore garnet. Notice that this is all written in lowercase. I'll explain in a second. And this is a new item. And the new item needs new item dot settings. So once again, we'll simply select the item dot settings, hit the tab key to auto complete it. And at the very end, end it with a semicolon. And in theory now, our custom item is already inside of the game. It doesn't have a texture yet. It doesn't have a name yet, a proper one and all sorts of things. But it is in theory inside of the game. Now, when you notice the name right here, it is actually all lowercase and it has no spaces. This is because this is the same restrictions that your mod ID has. It is extremely important that this is all lowercase, no spaces, basically you know, basically always follow the idea that if you have multiple different names, just separate them with an underscore and you're basically going to be good to go. Now, our custom item is not yet added to a creative mode tab. In this case, we're going to add this to an item group very easily. We're going to say item group events. This is going to be inside of the register mode items method. So item group events. Once again, hit tab to auto complete it. Dot modify entries event. Once again, tab to auto complete it. Passing in the key, this is going to be item groups dot, in this case, ingredients. So we're going to hit ingredients right here. And once again, tab to auto complete it. After the closing parenthesis, we then want to call the register method right here. And then start typing in entries. And you can see it then suggests to us this entries. Then this little arrow over here to the curly brackets. We simply hit tab to auto complete again. Then add a opening curly bracket and the closing curly bracket will happen like generate automatically. We hit enter once and make sure to end it with a semicolon. And now inside of here, right? So inside of these curly brackets, we'll simply write entries.add passing in the pink garnet from above. So you can see it suggests the pink garnet to us. Tap to auto complete it and end it with a semicolon. And now the pink garnet has been successfully added to the ingredients item group. Awesome. But in this case, our pink garnet does not have a name. Right now, it will be named item.tutorialmod.pinkgarnet. It would not have a texture. It would simply be a black and violet square. And that is, of course, not tenable. We want something proper. And to get something proper, we need to go into the resources assets folder. It's going to be very interesting indeed. Now, it's extremely important that every directory we're now going to create is written exactly correctly if there are any typos in there, then one of those things is not going to work. So keep that in mind to double check this. So in the resources, assets, tutorial mod or your mod ID, we want to right click new directory and we will call this the LANG lang directory. Then in tutorial mod, once again, we want to create another directory called models, models with an S. And then lastly, in tutorial mod, we want to create one more directory called textures. Inside of the models folder, we also want to create another directory called item. And the same thing goes in the textures folder. So textures, right click, new directory called item. And that is the basic structure that we need right now. In the lang folder, this is where all of the translations go. So of course, we don't want the pink garnet to be called pink garnet. And namely, it's probably not called pink garnet in every language that exists. Therefore, we're going to take the key that we have, a translation key, and we're going to translate this inside of a custom file over here. And that happens to be in the lang folder. We're going to right click here, new file called en underscore us dot json. So this is going to be the default language that Minecraft starts in. In this case, it's going to be English US. And that is the code right here. You can also use other codes and you can, of course, change the language then for that as well. In this instance and in this entire tutorial series, we're simply going to use the en underscore us json file and that's going to be fine. We hit enter and basically take a look at the json file. How does this look like? It's very straightforward. We simply had curly brackets over here. Once again, if you start typing the first one, like the opening one, the closing one generates automatically. And then here we simply have a string. So inside of the quotation marks, item dot tutorial mod dot, in this case, pink underscore garnet. After the closing quotation mark, a colon and then pink garnet written, as you can see, in a proper manner. So this is the key, which of course you can see, right? This is an item 
under tutorial mod, this is going to be our mod ID, right? This one right here. And then the last one here, the pink underscore garnet, is the name we're giving the item right here. And that is the way that this is connected to each other. And this is the translated name. So if I hover over the pink garnet inside of my inventory, that is going to be the name that I have, that I'm going to see right there, basically. Right, and then we move on to the item model files. So models item here, we're going to right click again, new file. And this is going to be the pink underscore garnet JSON file. And this one is going to be a doozy. So I'm going to write this out and then I'm going to explain. You also have this available to you down below. So you can basically check this in the GitHub repository so you don't have to necessarily type this out. This is going to be the parent right here. And the parent is going to be Minecraft colon item slash generated, then comma. And then I'm going to have textures, a textures object even. And this textures object is going to be the following. It's going to have a layer zero. And that layer zero is going to be tutorial mod colon item slash pink underscore garnet. I might say, what the frick is going on right here? Well, an item model JSON file basically determines how the item is rendered and also what its textures are. The parent right here determines that the custom item is, in this case, pink garnet, is going to be rendered in the way that normal items are rendered. So, for example, if you take a diamond, even though a diamond in theory is only a 2D texture, it is sort of extruded into a third dimension, right? That is sort of the how the item is rendered. And that is basically what this one does, right? The item generated, that is what that does. And then we define the texture by saying, hey, this is under tutorial mod. So tutorial mod right here, textures, textures, item, the item folder. And then it's going to look for a pink underscore garnet dot PNG. That is very interesting indeed. And those two textures are, of course, available to you as well for download. And basically, what you will have is you simply have those two textures. You're going to drag them into IntelliJ. I'm going to hold Control to not move them, but to actually copy them over. And then I'm going to hit OK, add them to the GitHub. And there we go. Now we have the pink underscore garnet and the raw underscore pink underscore garnet, both PNGs inside of our textures item folder. And that is exactly what this points to, the pink garnet texture. Pretty awesome indeed. And of course, I've basically, you know, spoiled a little bit with the pink, raw pink garnet. We'll see that in just a second. But right now, we have everything we need for a singular item. Now, you might say that is a lot of steps that we need for a singular item. I absolutely agree with you. But we'll see in just a second when we add the second item, how incredibly easy it is once you set everything like this up, right? So we, of course, need the mod items class only once, right? That would be ridiculous to, you know, write all of this again for just single item. You know, if you have like 100 items, all of this craziness, this, of course not. We literally only need to add another item like this. That's all we need to do. We'll see this in a second. But for now, we have everything we need. We have a name for our item. We have the item model JSON file that points to the texture. We've added the texture over here and we've also added the item via the registry right here and also added it to the ingredients tab. So with all of that done at the top right corner, Minecraft client, we can simply hit the run button and jump into the game and see our item into the inside of Minecraft for the first time. All right, so we find ourselves in Minecraft and let's take a look at the ingredients tab at the very bottom. There it is. The pink garnet has been successfully added to the game absolutely freaking fantastic and now let's take a look at the second item and i'm telling you it's so much easier right so for the second item of course we need a lot of the different things that we've already seen but in this case in the mod items class we simply need another public static final item this is going to be the raw underscore pink underscore garnet equal to once again the register item method this is going to have a name over here this is going to be the raw underscore pink underscore garnet and once again, of course, a new item with new item settings, right? Once again, if you get a suggestion, simply hit tab to autocomplete it, and then it's going to autocomplete that suggestion. The second thing here is, of course, we want to add this to the ingredients too. So entries.add raw underscore pink underscore garnet. And there we go. Now we've added it to the creative mode tab. We need to give it a translation. So we simply add another line right here, item.tutorialmod dot raw underscore pink underscore garnet and this is the raw pink garnet and then we have the texture already added and here ah uh, this is going to be a great sort of little trick right here if you already have a working item model json file what you can do is you can simply drag it into the same folder and then hold control and you can see that this turns into a little plus this is going to now copy this particular file and we can change the name to raw underscore pink 
underscore garnet. We're going to hit OK. And then instead of pointing to the pink garnet, the raw pink garnet is simply going to point exactly to raw underscore pink underscore garnet. So it now points to the correct texture. And we've added the second item just that easily. I will say that is pretty freaking cool. And that is not actually that crazy of a what well, additional things to do basically so just for the sake of argument let's jump into the game again and see the second item as well all right so we're back in the game again and at the very bottom of here you can see there is the raw pink garnet added as well absolutely freaking fantastic and there you go that is the first step and that is custom items added to minecraft freaking awesome all of the code is of course available down below in the github repository so you can double check everything there including also download for the textures as well so no worries there at all but that is it for this tutorial next time in this video we'll add custom blocks to minecraft hope to see you there so yeah